Okay, um, so in the last class we were looking at the concept of relativistic momentum. So we went through an argument to derive or to, to choose what we should take as the relativistic definition of momentum, and we settled, settled on the following. So it's a four-vector quantity, that means it has four components, and it was m divided by 1 minus v squared over c squared, where v is the speed of the particle you're measuring, or the object you're measuring. And then here, the time component is the c, and then x component, y component, z component. Okay? So, some things you can note about this. The first thing is that at small velocities, the x, y, and z components just become the Newtonian momentum, right? Because this factor on the bottom is small. The second thing is we proved that this definition means that if this thing is conserved according to one observer, then it's observed according to all observers. So that means it's compatible with the principle of rel relativity. All observers agree whether it's conserved or not. Um, and the final thing we talked about last time is the meaning of the time component of momentum. This is what we should call PT. Um, and they went through some arguments about what this should mean. And what we found is that the time component of momentum, first of all, is equal to the energy of the body divided by C, the total energy of the body. Um, and a consequence of the conservation of this thing, sorry, I should be resisting my finger. A consequence of the conservation of this thing, which we showed last time, is that if you give a form of energy to a body, let's say you heat it up, then that must also increase the mass in order for this um, time component to be conserved. So, increasing the energy of a body by a certain amount, delta E, sorry, by delta E, increases the mass By, if I write here, you can't see, can you? <laughs> so I'll write the formula up here. So the change in the mass of the body is equal to the amount of energy that you give it, or, or take away, divided by c squared. And this, as I mentioned, is the E equals mc squared, the famous equation of Einstein. Okay. So one thing to note about this is that when we talk about increasing the energy here, we mean non-kinetic energy. Okay. So according to this definition of, of mass, just increasing the speed of something, that increases its total energy, but it doesn't increase its mass. Right? The kind of energies which increase its mass is, like I say, you could give it heat energy, that would increase its mass. You could charge it up, give it electrical potential energy, that would increase its mass, and so on. Okay. But kinetic energy is not included in this, um, in this statement here. Okay, um, so I mentioned at the end of last time that we were going to look at one piece of evidence for this, and this is the formation of hydrogen. So hydrogen is made up of only two particles. One is a proton, one is an electron. And if you imagine them originally being far away from each other, so that there's very little electrical interaction between the two, then in order to make hydrogen, you need to bring them together. Okay. And the process of bringing them together means that you lose 
potential energy. You're losing electrical potential energy, right? Because these two particles are attracting each other. And that means, according to this defini definition here, as you lose energy, the total mass should also decrease. Okay? So, what we expect to find is that the mass of hydrogen should be equal to the mass of the things it's made of, the mass of the proton plus the mass of the electron, minus the electrical potential energy lost divided by c squared. Okay, so as you bring them together, they lose energy. Therefore, according to this formula, the total mass should decrease by this amount. Right, so the masses of all of these things are known to a very high degree of accuracy, um, as is the potential energy that you lose in the process of making hydrogen. So this is something we can check experimentally. Okay. So I'm going to give you the data in a minute. Before I give you the data, I want to explain some units. Which are common, so these are units which are commonly used um, in particle physics. So when you're talking about subatomic particles like this. Okay. So the first is the unit of energy. Which is the electron volt. So the electron volt, as the name suggests, this is the amount of energy that an electron gains if it crosses an electrical potential of one volt. Okay. So you have here, you know, you have two charged plates, so you have an electrical potential here of one volt, and you move, so the electron, because it's negatively charged, feels the force going this way. If the electron moves from here to here, it gains some energy. The force, the force generated by the electric field is doing work on the electron. So the electron is gaining energy, and the amount of energy it gains is called the electron volt. Okay. That's the definition. Um, and in terms of the SI units of energy, this is equal to 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 joule. Okay. And it's given the symbol EV. Okay. So one electron volt is 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. That's the unit of energy. Um, let me next talk about the unit of mass. I don't have to write so much here, so I think it's it there. Okay. Um, to make the unit of mass, you, you kind of use this equation, right? What this equation says is that the units of mass are equal to the units of energy divided by speed squared, right? which you can easily check. Um, so therefore, we define the units of mass as equal to one electron volt divided by c squared. Okay. So this would be the change in mass of something that gained in energy one electron volt. Okay, okay. Um, and this is equal to 1.78 times 10 to the minus 36 kilograms. And finally, units of momentum, well, momentum units are mass times speed units, so therefore you measure them in electron volts over C. Okay. And this, in terms of the SI units, is 5.34 times 10 to the minus 28 
kilogram meters per second. Okay, so why are these units used? A couple of nice things about the units here is that first of all, the numbers, the, the sizes are about right for subatomic particles. Right? So for example, the electron has a mass of about 10 to the minus 30 kilograms, okay? which is about the right size here. Okay? So they're about the right size to be useful in atomic physics, that's one thing. A second nice thing about these units is that in these units, the speed of light is 1. So in these units, the units of speed... So you can find the units of speed from the units of energy and mass, okay? Because the units of speed is equal to the square root of the units of energy divided by the units of mass. Right? For example, half mv squared is energy, right? So this is the square root of electron volts divided by electron volts over c squared. And then you see that this comes out as being c. Okay. So in other words, the speed of light in these units is just equal to 1 times the unit, which is C. So the speed of light is 1, in other words. And that's another nice property of, of these units, especially when you're working in relativity theory, where the speed of light is the most significant speed in the theory. Right, so these are the units we're going to use in this question. So I'm going to give you now the data for the mass of the proton, mass of the electron, and mass of hydrogen, and the change in potential energy in these units. Okay. Um, so the data is the following. The mass of a proton in these units is 938272. 0, 4, 6 EV over C squared. And you have, you have to go to this level of accuracy to, to be able to check this equation. Is that? The mass of an electron is 0, 5, 1, 0, 9, 9, 8. And the mass of a hydrogen atom is 938783030. Okay. So you see that virtually all of the mass of hydrogen is just the mass of the, the proton within it. Right? And finally, the change in potential energy is equal to 13.6. So, this result here, I mean, you can measure it experimentally, but it's also, we'll see in, in the course after the midterm exam, you can get this result from quantum mechanics. So it's actually not a, this question of what is the potential energy inside the hydrogen atom is something you can't answer using classical physics. So you need quantum mechanics, um, and we'll see this result after the midterm exam, where this number comes from. Okay. Right, so those are the data. And now you can check, I'll leave you to do it in your own time then, MP plus ME minus MH 
comes out as being 14 electron volts over C squared from the data here. Okay? And indeed, this is approximately equal to delta E, which is 13.6 over C squared. Okay? So, that is some evidence then that um, this equation here is right. As the particles come together, they lose potential energy, and you can indeed measure the change in mass as a result of the loss of potential energy. Thank you.